Let's talk about surface imperfections in our 3D models. It's that dust that is left on the surface when you leave it be for some time. It's the fingerprints on the touch screen of your phone. It's the tiny scratches on the glass. It's the bumpiness of a wood surface. Those little crests and troughs which interact with light differently. The crests are predominantly brighter and the troughs are relatively darker. And so this variable interaction with light gives the surface an organic, imperfect, rough look. These all encompass surface imperfections. And these imperfections really sell the render. Perfect surfaces look fake and engineered and they don't really exist in the real world. There are two major methods with which you can add the surface imperfections. If you download your texture materials from a good place like maybe Polyhaven or Polygon, they give you some other weird looking images along with the diffuse image. These weird looking images are what's called maps. And these images effectively map certain properties of the material. We've covered these properties in the relevant sections, but the one that we are concerned with today are roughness maps. These are black, white, grey images which tell the render engine the varying degree of roughness of different areas of the material as black and white. So the black areas will be less rough or shiny and the whiter areas will be rougher. And this is how the roughness map is sort of mapped over the diffuse texture. We plug this roughness map in the roughness channel of our shader and we can go a step further to tighten the areas of transition between full roughness and zero roughness. There's another clever implication of roughness map and that is, as previously mentioned, to add fingerprints and scratches. These are standalone images and are just referred to as surface imperfections. You can simply plug these in into the roughness channel of the principal shader on the material you want to show these features on and you have instant results. Again, you can control the transition by using a color ramp which tightens or loosens up the areas of transition. The second way is the procedural way of generating roughness. If you want absolute control of the look and feel of the roughness, the easiest way is to use a noise generator node. You can use the output of the noise to generate roughness. You can preview the output of the noise generator with control shift left click in the material preview mode with the node wrangler turned on. This way, you can tweak the look and feel of the roughness by changing the parameters of the noise generator node and then obviously controlling and refining it further by color ramp. By using different generators individually or in combination, you can practically create any roughness map with endless variations. So how should we go about this between these image-based roughness maps and procedurally generated roughness maps? Well, what I personally do and what we can do is, if we need a specific kind of roughness like scratches or fingerprints, it's convenient to use roughness maps, which are the images. And if we need to throw in some generic roughness like rust on a piece of metal, it's easier to just do it the procedural way. All right, this has been it for this part of the series. I will see you soon.